Hey everybody, Kirkland Gold just released earnings. I just read over their one report. I wanted to share with my thoughts, some things I highlighted and just overall thoughts about the company. Two quick things. I'm an investor. I disclosure, like again, I am invested in this. This will be kind of biased towards, again, my opinions. Also, I'm not an advisor, financial person. I'm just a guy talking. I'm just like a friend talking about a stock with you. So just take my opinions and everything with a grain of salt. This video might be kind of long. Their thing is quite lengthy. Um, we'll try to go as fast as possible, but you know, we'll take it chill. Anyway, Kirk and Gold, today's November 5th. They reported strong earnings in cash flow in Q3. That's kind of a common thing. We saw that with we saw this with NEM as well as AG or First Majestic Silver. Because of these higher gold prices and silver prices, they're generating so much more cash. I expect this to continue in the future, just because of my outlook again for the world. I think gold and silver prices will continue to climb steadily. Uh, Q3 2020 results equal stronger one-year growth in production, revenue, net earnings, and cash flow. Basically, everything you want in a company to increase all those key metrics. So net earnings of 202 million, uh, about 91 cents per share. Wall Street or the market was estimating a point 90 or a 90 91.5 cent share EPS. So I guess they were on track. They had record free cash flow uh, up 52% from the prior quarter or quarter this last year 2019. Uh, the balance sheet strength their cash increased by 58% since June 30th this year. Uh, they're continuing exploration success. Um, yeah, I don't know why I highlighted that. Um, they repurchased back a lot of shares, 14 million shares since a year to date. This is also kind of offset by, I think again, they're, we, we'll talk about this in a minute because I think they actually added a bunch of shares to finance some activities or something. However, again, they're just trying to keep that net dilution or that dilution to be zero. Quarterly dividend increased 50%. Um, it was effective Q4. They've been increasing their dividend quite quickly or rapidly. March 2019, it was about three cents a share and then increased a little bit more, three cents a share, then six cents a share by December 30th, 2000, or December, yeah, 2019. And then 12 and a half cents a share, April 2020. And now it looks like they will continue. So very, very, again, it's still kind of a low yielding company, but growth is there, their cash flow is there. This company has no debt. This is just, in my opinion, on track for a very solid, their market cap right now is almost 14 billion so they're still quite small they have a lot of room to grow just just as like a comparison NEM and gold or GOLD barrack gold they're about 50 billion so they got room to grow um, these are just some really key metrics right here you know production increased 37 percent from last uh, year this quarter just stuff like that uh, one thing they're going to mention a lot in this is detour lake they acquired this January 30th, 2020, and, and it added 14 point million ounces to the company's mineral reserve based on or, uh, with the potential for significant growth in the next few years. Basically, they acquired this mine like in January, like eight months ago, whatever, six months, I don't even really know. I guess nine, yeah, nine months. And it's already produced a significant amount of their company's cash flow and like money back. So this is something they're going to keep highlighting because it was a great like purchase that they had it's going to yield them even more cash in the future they made some alliance with uh, newmont uh let's see let's go down let's go down to operational or financial operational highlights net cash provided by operating activities increased 33 percent year to date free cash flow increased 52 percent year to date and they produced 14 44 percent more ounces of material or mineral or whatever gold year to date so Again, everything's increasing. Actually, real, that's a lot of increase. So they're they're growing. They're growing pretty fast, actually. Now, this is the CEO. Um, he just kind of talked about some stuff I want to highlight. Three, there, just in case you guys don't aren't fully aware, the three best mines are Detour Lake, Mas Mascasa, and Fosterville. Sorry for pronouncing these wrong. Mm -hmm. But Detour Lake, again, they just acquired that. And since they just acquired this, 
it's already one of their top three assets that's that's actually really good okay so another key opponent of our strategy is returning capital shareholder in february we announced our goal to repurchase 20 million shares over a 12 to 14 month period we have already per reached 14 million shares so far so i guess they're still looking to purchase 6 million shares more shares by the end of this year we'll see if they actually do that and so far 2020 we returned 643 million capital shareholders representing 2.3 or 35 cents per share just back in cash to shareholders so again their company is what like 50 bucks something 40 something 50 dollars to just this year you got back two dollars and 35 cents per share of your money like i also i love how they blatantly not blatantly but just came out and said that because it makes it very clear to me as also an investor like oh wait if i bought like one share oh i got back two dollars and 35 cents like so it's basically free anyway um again the acquisition of they were, they were wanting to add significant value to their balance sheet the acquisition of detour lake um, did this it generated 231 million of free cash flow in the first eight months since the transaction representing 40 percent of their total free cash flow year to date so just in the last like eight months or six months whatever however much time this this thing's been online they've been able to get 40 percent of their free cash flow just from that one mine they just purchased this year incredible in my opinion um new market gold is another acquisition they had but i guess it's not as impactful as detour lake Here's some of their operating performance. Here, revenue. Really, let's look at the nine months just because it's more information, in my opinion. Uh, they're about like massive increase. They went from almost a billion to 1.7 billion in revenue in the last nine months. Earnings are also substantially higher. Not as proportionate, but it's still good. Earnings per share is 1.85 in the beginning of September. Or nine months ended September. And now it's $2.05. Quite good. Gold production, they're producing about 300,000 more ounces this year and they're also getting about $300 per ounce more just because of higher gold prices. Free cash flow is also increased by about 250 million, sorry, 150 million, 170 million, something like that. Overall things are increasing. Again, this is a growing mine, but it's also pretty it's kind of large already, but it's still growing and they're not necessarily taking on vast amounts of debt to finance all these activities. Um, total earnings from mine operations. I want to look at this just to take the revenue and all the production costs and everything. So last year about 600 million. Now it's 1.5 billion. So it's kind of increasing linearly. That's pretty good. I mean, obviously not exactly linearly, but it's good. Earnings before tax. Again, they're doing pretty well with that. Net earnings increased. Uh, diluted EPA, or here's the one thing, weighted average number of common shares outstanding, look at the diluted, they have like 60 million more shares about than last year, again, they did buy back a lot of shares, but again, they're doing something with the shares that, I guess they are buying them back, but they're also putting them on the back on the market to you know, finance some activities or something like that, exactly what they're doing, I'm not sure, we will have to look further down the page, I think I highlighted it, but I'm not confident. Revenue in Q3 increased 66% from last Q3. Revenue year to date increased 83% from the prior year. 45% of that was due to an increase in gold sales. 26% was because of the average increase in the gold price. Increase in sales mainly reflects the contribution of this brand new mine that they have or whatever, increasing a very large amount of money in cash. Uh, there's one negative thing reflecting lower production a reduction of sales in Mascasa, reflecting lower production levels largely due to operations and uh, ongoing impact of health and safety protocols, including those related to yeah, lower workforce equipment availability. So their Mascasa plant is having some problems. However, again, they're still able to combat that because of their other mines. That's why it's important to be a little diversified. Uh, net earnings are also impacted by strength or foreign exchange, uh, higher royalty expense on some other mines that they're paying more. It's also a, it's going to negatively impact their earnings potential. And also there's still a continued suspension of Holt Complex. This is one of their mines also having some problem. The reduction in that, actually, I'm just going to go in here because it kind of says it. Mm. Even though they had a reduction in gold sales, they had a high rate. Uh, did I miss something? I think this quarter they actually sold less. They sold less ounces of gold in the previous quarter, however, they were able to realize a much higher average cost on that gold price, just to just comparing it to last quarter. Let's see what else. Um, this is basically going to summarize everything. Unfavorable impact on net earnings per share year over year by an increase in average shares outstanding. Uh, the same period. Um, one of the biggest parts 
or one of the biggest things that they were saying is because of this increase in shares that they had, kind of like dilution, it heavily impacted their net earnings per share. Again, that just makes sense. How much you're earning, how many shares are out there. So they are buying back shares, but it's still more shares that they put on the market. The key driver of growth is in adjusted net earnings compared to both uh, was higher revenue. So again, they're making very high or much higher revenue compared to last quarter. This is again due to that new mine that they keep hinting at. Let's see what else. Here's a review of all their mines. You probably want to read this. This would make this video like 10 minutes longer. Um, so I'm just going to kind of briefly skip over that. Fosterville mine and Detour Lake mine are going to be their largest. We'll see down here. Here are their big boy mines. Uh, actually, these are the guidance down here. It's going to be how much gold or how many ounces they're producing. Again, these two are a huge contributor, like 80% of all their ounces produced of gold are in these two mines. Oh, these mines are actually also having some difficulties. I forgot to think about that. So that was to keep that in mind. But as of this year, these are the two mines that have done wonders. So their guidance, uh, the company withdrew the guidance in April. They reinitiated on June 30th. Um, because just again their business wasn't that heavily impacted as they thought so they're basically on track to doing what they wanted to do um sustained capital expenditures in 2020 are now expected to be within line re reissued for full year guidance um, gross capital expenditures um in fosterville one of their larger mines they're getting a new gold room refinery new ventilation systems and stuff like that so they're still paying spending things that they anticipated at the beginning of the year despite all of the chaos extensive drilling is being completed during q4 2020 with the total exploration expenditures full year guidance being in line with the low end of the reissued full year basically everything from sust er, sustaining capital expenditures growth exploration they're all in guidance in line so that's very good to see that the company's doing that or that's very good that the company is able to continue kind of where they decided the company would be at the beginning of the year and that's going to kind of wrap up this discussion again i think this is a great company they have their balance sheet is great they have very little debt they're produce so much cash that they're able to again this company is still relatively new not new but you know nem's been around let's say for like 30 40 years since like the 90s or 80s nem or kl's been around maybe like 10 years don't take don't quote me on that but much less time maybe even less maybe five I think they're public been publicly traded i guess we can make that call that since 2015 so if this is going to be their fifth or sixth year and they're able already able to produce a dividend just because how much cash they're cash they're producing they can also raise more money by people buying their shares you know just makes sense it's a win-win but their balance sheet is they have like no debt it's it actually blows my mind canadian company kirk and gold i think they have a lot of good potential thanks for watching everybody hopefully you enjoyed this discussion and I'll see you in another video.